Welcome to this video. In this video we will introduce power in electrical circuits and we'll talk about uh, how to compute the power dissipated in an element of an electrical circuit. Uh, power is extremely important in many applications and oftentimes uh, in uh, some applications it's an obsession uh, because the amount of power that uh, is dissipated in a circuit will determine things like battery life in your cell phone or your iPod or your iPad or your other uh, mobile devices. Uh, the amount of power that's dissipated in a processor determines uh, the cooling requirement in a computer. Uh, how much uh, uh, heat do you have to dissipate in order to keep your processor from melting? Uh, power is important when you're designing uh, electrical grids. Uh, the utility uh, scale uh, distribution or generation and distribution of power. So for example, how many uh, nuclear plants do you need to uh, supply the energy for a given area? Or how big do you make a solar array to make your house self-sufficient in some sense? So um, that's the idea. We'll start by uh, looking or we'll look at this example as we go through. Uh, for those of you that have not seen uh, the previous videos, uh, this is a uh, picture of the light bulb. So here is a light bulb and two batteries. This is essentially the inside of um, a flashlight. And below this, I've also put the, uh, uh, the schematic of this circuit. So I have the two batteries. And I have the light bulb modeled as a resistor. So we'll use this circuit as our first example of how to do power computations. And then uh, we'll do a couple others as well. So power, um, hopefully you've uh, seen before in, uh, in your physics courses. Uh, but if you haven't, it's basically uh, energy per unit time. So the units for power uh, can be written as joules per second. And this is a unit that's used often enough. Uh, we call this a watt, uh, named after James Watt, uh, one of the developers, early developers of the steam engine. In electrical circuits, you'll hopefully recall from previous videos that current is charge per unit time and voltage is energy per unit charge. So it turns out that power can be obtained in a circuit by V, the voltage, multiplied by the current. So this is a, uh, a pretty standard, well, this is the standard way to compute power in an electrical circuit. As an example, if I look at the power going through my, or dissipated by my light bulb, power doesn't actually go through light bulbs, it's dissipated by a light bulb. Uh, the power, in this case, is going to be the voltage across the light bulb, which I've labeled here as 3 volts, times the current going through the light bulb. In this case, uh, the current going through the light bulb is 0.47 amps. So if I perform this computation, I get... something a little less than 0.15. It turns out that I get 1.41 watts. Okay. So what this says is that this light bulb is dissipating 1.41 watts. Or another way of thinking about it is every second uh, the light bulb dissipates 1.41 joules. Uh, primarily is heat. Okay. Now in making this computation, we have made a few assumptions. Uh, 
we have what we call the passive sign convention. And the purpose of the passive sign convention is to make sure that we're clear about which components in the circuit are dissipating power and which components in the circuit are supplying power to the other components that are dissipating power. And the idea behind the passive sign convention is the following. If I have a current that is flowing through a component from a positive potential to a negative potential, from a higher potential to a lower potential, then I write this is P is equal to VI, as I've done in this example. And if the current is indeed flowing uh, from higher potential to lower potential, I get a positive value. You'll notice that this is positive. And a positive value means that the component is dissipating uh, power. On the other hand, if I look at the power going, let's see, we'll pick a really ugly color here. If I look at the power that's being dissipated or supplied in this case by the batteries, uh, the current flowing through the batteries is going uh, this direction and I'm going from a lower potential to a higher potential. And so if I have the current flowing from minus to plus, then I would have power is equal to negative VI. Okay. So again, this is the passive sign convention, and it allows us to determine whether a component is dissipating or supplying power. So looking at this, uh, looking at the batteries then, uh, if I were to actually continue working this example, I have minus 3 volts times 0.47 amps, and this gives me minus 1.41 watts. And again, what the negative sign, what this guy here means, is that the batteries are supplying power to the rest of the circuit. Okay, so that's pretty much um, uh, all you need to know about computing power. Uh, we'll do a few more examples uh, to help solidify the concepts. One thing before we uh, do, though, you'll notice that except for the sign, this value here, the power supplied by the batteries, is the same as the power dissipated by the resistor, which um, is a good thing. Basically what it says is that energy in an electrical circuit is conserved. So if I'm supplying power, which is again is energy per unit time, by batteries, then I have to dissipate that same amount of power by in this case a light bulb, and generally by a load. Uh, this means that uh, energy or power is neither created nor destroyed in a circuit, which again uh, is the way the world works. If you could create energy in a circuit, uh, you could be rich beyond your uh, wildest imagination because you'd have a free uh, way of, or you'd have free energy. Okay, so let's do a few more examples of finding um, power that is supplied and dissipated. Okay, this is a picture of an electrical motor and suppose that I take my electrical motor and I hook it up to a battery. This is my drawing of a battery. Okay, so I have a positive terminal and a negative terminal and the positive terminal gets hooked up here, the negative terminal gets hooked up here. I can redraw this in terms of a schematic diagram like this. And let's suppose that our battery is a 6 volt battery. So that means that it supplies a potential of 6 volts. This is our motor and you'll notice I've drawn this as a box rather than draw it as a resistor 
because the way that motors dissipate power is um, different than a resistor in the sense that motors uh, take the power supplied by the source and convert it into rotational motion as opposed to uh, heat like a resistor. It turns out that for a motor of this size, a typical current through the motor might be 4 amps. So I have a voltage of 6 volts supplied to the motor and uh, 4 amps is going through the motor. So the question is how much power is the motor dissipating? Well, I have power is voltage times current, which is, um, and again, this is the power dissipated by the motor. You can see the, uh, we'll go to a different color here, the current going into the motor goes from a higher potential to a lower potential. So this is going to be 6 volts, that's the voltage across the motor, times 4 amps, which is 24 watts. So this motor is dissipating 24 watts. Um, again, when I look at the power supplied by the battery, I have the power is minus VI. Again, it's negative because I've drawn the current going from a low potential to high potential. So this is negative 6 times 4 amps, which again is negative 24 watts. Again, this negative sign implies that the battery is supplying power as opposed to dissipating power. Isn't this fun? Okay, let's look at one last example. This is a picture of um, <clears throat> actually a fairly, by today's standards, modestly powered uh, processor of the sort that you would see in a desktop computer or maybe a mobile computer. And I don't know if the video is good enough, but if you look at this statement right here, it says a heat sink or a fan is required. The issue there is that this processor <coughs> will dissipate enough power that um, you have to get rid of that, and it dissipates it as heat, and you have to get rid of that heat with a heat sink and a fan. So what we know about this processor is that the supply voltage is 2.5 volts and that the processor dissipates a peak power of 8.5 watts. So in this case, what we might want to know is, in fact, if we're going to design this into a system, we definitely want to know how much current is required to, what, what's the peak current that we'll have to supply to this processor? Well, uh, doing a simple algebraic manipulation on our relationship between voltage and power and current, we find that the current is P over V, so that's going to be 8.5 watts over 2.5 volts, which if I do the computation, use my favorite uh, computer or calculator, which right now is Google search, so this means the current, or the peak current, is going to be 3.4 amps. So there you have it. Uh, we can do several things with power computations. Uh, we can find out if we know voltage and current, how much power is dissipated. If we know how much power is dissipated, we can find either, a, and we know a voltage, we can find current. If we know how much power is dissipated and we know current, we can find a voltage. So this concludes the video on power and uh, I look forward to uh, talking to you in subsequent videos.